Met Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, as I offer these words this morning, I beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Prior honored guest, confrere, I am grateful for the invitation to share a few words this morning on our service, on our scripture, and upon our hymns. Let me begin with this short story. After the fall of the Crusader Kingdom to Jerusalem, of Jerusalem uh, to Saladin's army in 1187, called the defeat, the Muslim leader Saladin faced a dilemma. Who would be entrusted with the custodianship of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, also known as the Church of the Resurrection? The Greek, the Latin, the Armenian-speaking Christians who remained in the city contested one another's right to care for the church that was built over Jesus' tomb. Frustrated by their inability to agree, Saladin made a practical decision, and he entrusted the church's keys to the Judah family, a Muslim family, and over the many years they have continued their ministry and have passed it down from age to age, a responsibility passed to generations, now shared as the family has grown with the Nuzabeh family. Even today, If you go each morning in the old city, as I have done, a family member meets you there and unlocks the doors to one of Christianity's holiest sites. Nearly a millennium later, Saladin's practical solution to Christian division has become a powerful symbol of peace among the children of Abraham in a region that today still hungers for peace. The eight points of the cross that we wear as members, as confrere, as kin of the Order of St. John, as you may know, represents a beatitude. As Jesus teaches, it is the poor and the meek those who mourn, who hunger for justice, the merciful, the pure of heart, and those who suffer persecution who are blessed by God. We are called to do more than receive such a blessing. We are invited, each of us, no matter what our own story is, to multiply this blessing as peacemaking, as peacemakers in the world around us. If you will, you and I, along with many, many others, have been given keys for peace. Our insignia serves as a reminder of this particular mission that we, in our work, in our ministry of giving and doing good works, are bearers of God's peace. Today's service calls us to reflect on our sacred commitments, pro fide et pro utilitate hominum. Our motto summons us, if you will, to embody a different way of life, not one of violence and hatred, but one of love and one of blessing for both the enemies we choose and for those who choose us. Herein lies the great chasm of the most venerable order of the Hospital of St. John of Jerusalem, when the world cries, an eye for an eye, you and I and many others respond instead by restoring sight. We've been entrusted with the keys to peace, not through politics, 
and war, but through medicine and through care, through service, through ministry, not with a sword, but with a scalpel, not with a fist, but with an arm around someone who is hurting. Thus, we commit ourselves today to break this cycle of retaliation, seeking not the absence of war, but the end of war. To make peace is to bear with one another and to forgive one another. And above all, we are called to put on love which binds us and binds everything together in perfect harmony. The peace we bring, the peace we seek to impart, is not merely an inner calm for ourselves to enjoy us alone, but it is a forgiveness that enters the world, changing the relationships around us. Relationships, certainly the ones between you and me and our kin in this order and our neighbors, but also among nations. It is lived out through our work. We accompany the sick, focusing on our eye hospital, the volunteer corps, raising funds and supporting our global organization and ministry. In doing so, you see, we are embodying a radical embrace of God's love and peace that says and holds up to the world, it does not have to be this way. But instead, we undertake a different way of life. Our chivalric work requires us courage and vision, daring to rise above division, to serve the most vulnerable together, despite what our views are. Our history reminds us that we are called to look beyond political and social rifts of our time, leaning toward one another as we shoulder the ministry of our order for the good of others, awaiting peace that comes in God's time. Angel voices ever singing our anthem goes today. Lift up your heart, the choir will sing life's ceaseless song of angels around God's throne. Sing the praises of their king, so must we harmonious ever, seeking justice, freely forgiving, and working for peace for all eternity. The spirit of blessing then flows through the order, singing songs of peace through our lives, through our actions, by sharing what we have and doing good works. The order's work brings God's healing and hope into the darkest corners, touching the deepest hurts of humanity. Today, as we renew our commitment, beloved, Clothe yourselves with pity, mercy, kindness, and meekness, and let the weight of our sacred symbols fall upon your shoulders. Render service as a confrere before you have done. For today, those of you who are new members join a great choir of witnesses, one that, yes, Yes, has included renowned men and women, kings and queens and knights and dames and saints. Yet, in all of that, the model of our ministry, the model that inspired all those who have come before you, is that of Blessed Gerard, who understood what so many crusaders never did, and that is to discover and embrace the heavenly Jerusalem, is to serve, to give, to heal, and to forgive, to bring peace through our work. For at the end of all things, all that we have done is given as an offering, our lives as an offering, holy, blessed, glorious to God. And when we awaken, we will open our eyes at the end of it all in the place 
where there is everlasting day and a peace which passes all of our understandings. So, congratulations to you new members. But the weight of the office and work is great. And we are excited to share its burden of peacemaking with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter, at Texas Bishop. And spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.